betas. Sharing is caring. Gammas. <laughs> yeah, okay. Sh sharing is caring. That, well, that's two of our track. statements were on topic. Yeah. Uh, John, yeah, the, we the discussed Hulk, this! The Hulk. the Hulk was on topic! You told me comic books. What? <laughs> that was, yeah, this, that's <laughs> yeah. what we're talking about this week. All comic right. books. Welcome to the... The comic book perspective. You know I we have to put to security stickers on all of them. We don't trust any comic book lovers at our store. Great. You're all thieves. Anyway. Well, I, that's I, it'd be pretty easy to steal one. They're pretty small. Yeah. That's true. But, I don't know. Apparently, How recent do you guys item. have? Like, Oh, it's all trades. Assume, it's oh, just, just trades. trades? So you don't yeah. have single issues. No, I remember there was a time issues. where you could find single issues there. Oh, okay. Uh, no, I guess they've just gone with, uh, collector's edition. Like, or, well, big collector sets that include masks, which I guess V for Vendetta was popular, so they started doing it with other comics. Um, oh, wow. And then, just, yeah, trades. Walking Dead compendiums, stuff like that. Walking Dead is huge. That shows that's, that, like, right? the most popular comic book now. Well, like, independent book, or just in no, general? No, just in general, like, because that thing's everywhere. Maybe I I don't know I don't I've never worked at like if you don't count store. like maybe merchandising because then like I don't know Superman or Batman would win because of like pull ups underpants or something right yeah yeah I don't know we were gonna talk about the Steam uh, beta sharing family something yeah well I have the whole I, season I'm not gonna of lie Walking I'm kind of surprised that you kept going talking about that we could have transitioned like I own Walking Dead now you can finally play the PC version I, I own that too though I think all three of us own it. <laughs> Oh, never mind. Because it was part of, like, a humble weekly bundle. Oh, okay. Which? The Walking Dead game? Yeah, yeah there like, there was a Telltale bundle? one, right? It was, like, the... Yeah, I, I just bought it on 360, back when it was put on disc. Oh, okay. Oh, so you don't have the PC version? No. Oh, I thought you, you bought that, that humble sign, bundle. Well, it, was it a weekly? Yeah, it was, like, the first or second one, I remember. I might I might have missed that one. I sometimes okay. miss weeklies. Like, it's like, oh, I'll fully, I fully intend to buy that, Here, and then I just Well, forget. here's the thing. It's one. It's every week. Yeah, so, just, so I know to know, look for it. Like, I, I kind of, like, will then buy one that I wasn't that excited about to kind of make up for it, but it's... <laughs> like, it's like, I missed Darksiders 2, so then I was like, I'm going to pretend to be a Tropical fan now, and bought that okay. one. Okay. Well, or, you know what? Uh, Just follow them on Twitter. Oh, no. That was the wrong order. It was actually the uh, Testament of Sherlock Holmes one, whatever that was. I think that one's so, still going on. I think it's ending soon. Okay. It was, like, the something home bundle or something? Anyway, so the point is, my Steam library is getting bigger and bigger, and now other people can get in on the fun. Yes. I don't know. Uh, nine other people. Yeah. Nine How other machines. I so, just got the email today, so I haven't You just it. got the email today. I got it a couple days ago, and I've already shared uh, with John. Mm -hmm. um, so the way it goes for people who don't know is if you are in the beta, like I am, I can share my games with other people. Uh, other people cannot share them with me unless they're in the beta. So John has access to my games. I do not have access to his games. Uh, but Nathan, now that you're in the beta, we'll be able to share with back back and forth each other. And now I get access to more games too, which is great. Mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> there's there's definitely caveats. Like we can't both be playing the same thing at the same time. We can't obviously. be playing a game at, at all. Right. Like right. so, the way it's set up is if account. John if. Like, I can be in the client. Let's say I have the client open, and John's mm -hmm. like, oh, hey, I want to play, I don't know, like The Wolf Among Us or something from my list of games. He he can ins now install it on his machine without, you know, purchasing it, because I own it, and then he can start playing it. If I then load up, let's say, FTL, John gets a five-minute warning to stop playing the game, or otherwise it's just going to shut down on its own. So he has to get to, like, a save point. Oh, okay. The and only thing I... Go ahead. As a, here's the thing too. Uh, even if you're not playing games, uh, you will get a message pop up saying whether or not the person who's sharing games with you is or is not playing games if their games are available. So I I left Steam open earlier today and I got a pop up saying that I, it was okay for me to start playing your games again because you shut off. I assume the Wolf Among Us. Uh, today I didn't play any games today on my PC. Today or yesterday, either way, I got a pop up about it. Okay, okay. It would have been yesterday. It's like I, yeah, you, I played you some can play. Too, so okay, okay. so. Like, I can stay logged in and be doing community stuff or something, for example, but yeah, exactly. it's yeah. not until I click play on something that it starts pushing people out. Exactly. exactly. You can be in okay. the client okay. and do whatever you want in there, and that's fine. Okay, good. I guess I was a little worried this would require me to, like, log out of my Steam, which is something I never do, so... No. Right, yeah. right. Okay. It, it's a little weird how they sort the games, too, because it'll sort by, like, what game 
like the the username. So like it'll say like Sean's games and then my games. But that makes sense. any yeah, any that we both have only shows up in mine. That makes sense because like why would they need to show it twice? And it, I guess, it, but like I was like when looking through your list, I was like I thought Sean had a lot more games than this. And apparently I feel like that of- would just be putting more info there that is redundant because why I, would yeah. you care if actually, I own that game? Like, Brittany and I are using the same computer a lot, so actually her stuff shows up on mine already right now. So, like, I'll scroll down and then I'll see, like, I, I think it's like Dead Space or something. Like, there's a couple games down there that I don't have that show up on a separate list. Okay. So, I'm assuming it'll just be like that, but with more and more people as we right. add people. So. so, for those who might be getting into the beta or want more info on how it works... The way you basically need to do in order to share with somebody, and I'll use me and John as the example, is I, we, you need to basically simulate the idea that I was at John's machine, and I said his machine is okay to play my games. Um, so if you're obviously not at the machine, like we weren't, yeah. uh, John basically had to log in as me, and then you know I got, I got the little email saying, hey, so, new computer, is this okay? And I give John the code. And then John goes into my settings and authorizes his machine as like a safe machine to. Here's the thing to keep in mind, though: you have to enable the beta on that new machine as well. Right. That was one of the things of confusion we had. So even though John's not in the beta, he still had to opt in to, like, he had to log in as me, and then once again opt into the beta because on his machine he doesn't have the new version of Steam with this beta in there. Wait. So he needed so... to up. He needed to update his client to be able to access the beta, even, and the only way to do that is going through me, which he was logged in as me anyway, right? Yeah. So does this actually require swapping passwords then, or? At, at, initially, yes, because you need to simulate, like, John needed to simulate me going to his machine and saying his machine is safe. After you've done that, you don't need to log into me anymore. Okay. But so, just make sure you trust the person you're... Exactly. Well, I mean, right. that's why it's a family sharing plan. Right, yeah. okay. Um, so yeah, so then John authorizes his his machine, he can then log out, and then I can go back into mine, fine. John logs in to his account, but now his machine has the new Steam client, and he can now have access to my games. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, and I think it works pretty well. The only thing we haven't tested out yet uh, is, so let's say John's playing one of my games, and then I load up something, and he gets the five-minute warning. If I then close my game, will that five-minute warning still be there, or does it start, like reset? Like, oh, you're fine again, you can keep playing. Or do you have to exit the games and then like start a new session, or what? Like, does it I would just hope trigger it... five minutes till shutdown, and there's no way to kind of interrupt that? without just starting over. Yeah, I don't know. And I would hope, like, the one that would make sense would then, if I, like, you know, let's say John's not at a save point and he quickly messages me saying, like, no, wait, hang on for a sec, and I would leave, I would hope that it just lets John keep playing, but we'd have to test it out. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's cool, and uh, sharing games is fun. I can share with up to... I don't know if it's nine extra machines and then plus mine makes ten, or if it's ten additional machines. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Steam sharing, like video games and stuff, right? Just like video games. Oh, okay. Wait, actually, now actual valid question. I have Indie Game the Movie on there. Could you watch that? I don't know, but I already have it as well, so we'd have to find someone who doesn't have that movie. I oh, Okay. Do you not have that movie? I think I might, actually. Oh, okay. Because I was going to say, if you don't, I'm you should... I'm pretty sure it was part of an indie bundle. It was. Yeah. I think they threw it in there. An indie video game bundle? I don't, I don't know. Hey, what guys. What about software? Because you, like, you can get, like, design stuff, right? That's yeah. true. So it's like, hey, I have iOS development kit, like, Game Maker, so you guys can help me out. Develop or, me. yeah, I just make my own development kit. Yeah, you make your yeah. own game and then become right. a superstar. And then I never needed to spend any money to make my iOS game. Mm. I have no idea. There's got to be... I bet there's some rules with different publishers being like, no, you cannot give away our $200 game maker. Oh, yeah. Like, is this dependent on whether or not the game is allowed, has enabled? <laughs> like, does the developer say whether or not you can do this? Or I seem to recall them saying, yeah, the developer would have to enable it. I don't know. Mm. I... Like, Valve is just like, no, this is a thing we're doing. This is happening. 
I want to say when they announced it, the developers had to say it's okay or not. Huh. I don't know. Okay. I haven't. I haven't test. I haven't been able to try it because I'm on the other end of that. So. Right. I guess it's just started. So more information. Right. On it's this still the beta. Happen. Yeah. Um. But okay. Video games. Top down perspective. Uh, October sixteenth, twenty thirteen. That's what this is. That's what you're listening to right now. Um, listening Nathan, to Nathan right now. It, yeah, Nathan's the one talking. Uh, uh, Sean is here. I am. Uh, and John is also here. Yo. How's Hyperball going? Good. I still haven't had a chance to get it fixed, so okay. it's just kind of sitting there. That's a shame. I, know. Um, I also need to get soundproofing, well, at least to put around it. How oh. where do you buy that? Uh, it's probably at a store that sells uh, audio equipment. That's what I'm assuming. I've like heard a, a good cheap or... way to do it is the like I don't know if this is egg cartons. Like, yeah, like the bulk egg cartons from like Costco. Yeah, I've heard that a lot too. So if you um, want to go buy like 36 eggs times however many cartons you need, you could egg someone's house and soundproof your room. And Halloween is coming up, so perfect, perfect timing. timing. I think we just determined what you're gonna do. There we go. Now I've got to actually go and follow up on this, I guess. Yep. You don't. You don't have to commit. He has to. Shut game. up. No. It's too late. It's too late. We've we've solved it. Right. All right. But Clearly hey, we have twisted his arm enough. So you weren't playing hyperball. What yeah. were you playing? Nothing. Awesome. I did a bunch never of streaming. Fails. I did a bunch of streaming this weekend. Or so I played a bunch of games for stream, but I never played anything. Oh yeah, that would have been a good lead-in topic too. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah, I was actually amazed we didn't talk about that. I forgot Plays about that. Games. It was so terrible. I pushed it out of my memory. No, Stroll wasn't that bad, you guys. Come on. <laughs> I was down with Panzer Dragoon. You guys seemed like you're having a good time at Virtual Cop too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it would be better with a gun, obviously. So, for but... those who don't know what we're talking about, this last weekend, Thanksgiving weekend, we did the second part of the Sega Saturn live stream. Episode two. Yeah, we thought Attack it was going to be the close. conclusion, but we were wrong. <laughs> Sean owned way too many games. Yeah, I think we're down to. I think there's only twelve left, though. I, and yeah, I think, we yeah. went through twelve this time, so probably yeah, another I think three I, hours. I think I split it in half like that. It's kind of like Lord of the Rings trilogy or something. Right, like three, so four dark hour middle chapter. Chapters. We just did that. Yeah. What even happens at the end of the movie, though? Because in the book, it's really good. There's like crazy spiders and stuff, and Frodo gets kidnapped. But we don't need to talk about this. The movie, yeah, I don't even. I haven't. It's been a while since I watched that. Wait, yeah. what? Did like, I just miss... well, in Two Towers, the movie is it actually that dark of a middle chapter? Because they don't actually end it the same way the book did. So, I'm kind of trying to remember what's going on. There's a lot of fighting. That's all I remember at the moment. Yeah, about that. Helm's Deep happens, and all that. But I don't know. Huh? D- is there any like? Okay, what what did you do on the streaming night the day after? What was that? Uh, that was a uh, Force Cookie stream, which basically means. Every half hour or so, I switch games, and the chat votes on what game it is based on a couple of suggestions. Oh, okay. So is that why people are yelling at us to play Battletoads? Like, that's normally how that goes? Mm, not quite. Usually, I give the suggestions, and then they vote. So oh, okay. they just, they just really want That was just someone new. Yeah, that was just someone new who just wanted Battletoads. Who, some, just someone random who came in and was like, hey, maybe if I show Battletoads, these guys will play it. Yeah. And then and they probably completely it. ignored the title of Sega Saturn stream. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe he, thought he hoped that... it was on there. Yeah, exactly. Maybe he just well, didn't know. There's some CD version. It's way awesome. Battletoads is on everything, right? It's the best game. Exactly. It actually is on like a bunch of systems. It's on my calculator. Better be. Actually, that would be kind of hard to pull off. But okay, so literally nothing then outside of streaming stuff. So yeah. the uh, entire catalog of what John played this week is actually available on the internet. You can watch exactly. it. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. I'm actually going to be... Uh, Sorry, hang on. I'm going to be doing another stream tonight, probably after this podcast is recorded, of Dead Space 1. Okay. Late what, night. So what dude, made you pick geez. Dead Space 1? I've wanted to play it for quite a while, but I've never actually played it. So okay. I'm going to stream it because it's October and why not? Spooky. Oh, oh Halloween go. themed. Ooh, mm-hmm. spooky, spooky. Are you going to dress up? As what? Isaac? No, just like anything. I don't know. Oh, it's nah. Halloween. Me. Isaac would be a pretty elaborate costume. But that too, yeah, why don't like... you just make it Isaac costume? Like yeah, I'll get yeah, right on that. that. Let me go get my uh, metal welding system. Yeah, <laughs> what's that gun he have called? The laser the, thing? The plasma cutter? Plasma cutter. Yeah, that's that's the one. Uh, I like that first one quite a bit, but uh, I like that second yeah, I don't one. Know. 
The second one just changed gears so much that it was just like, we're more interested in being an action game, and that just kind right. of is not Right, exactly, and it's thing. like, hey, we're not going to be scary anymore, Sean, you can I come like... out from hiding. And it's All like, right. thanks, Dead Space 2. Yeah, fair enough. I and I own but... Dead Space 3, I think, from a Humble Bundle. Yeah, me too, so I guess I'm kind of curious in checking that out, but apparently so, they went even further in the action direction. So co-op? So... Let's do it? Oh, is that a... Oh, yeah, that is a thing. Did that we come should... out this year? That was this year. Oh, man, it... we should do it. I don't think it hit it, sales projections and stuff. It might be our game cover. of the year. Who knows? Which one? Um, Dead Space Three. Dead Space Three. I highly doubt that's going to be our game of the year. Yeah. Was there? Eight. Was that? That was exclusive to Origin, though. That was one of those ones. I so think it was like that PC. Battlefield. Yeah. Yeah. Which fair enough, but I don't know. I may or may not play that in the next few months. Probably not. Well, let me know if you're going to, because uh, I'll play it with you. Okay. Th- thanks. <laughs> um. Okay, I guess if that that's kind of all that's been happening, uh, Sean, what's been going on over over there? Over here, um, I have been checking out Saints Row Four. Okay, significantly since last night, but I've been playing a lot of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, this game is cracking on three. Holy smokes! <laughs> yep, I am literally jumping from one rooftop to the next and gliding and collecting orbs. Yep, that's kind of that was my immediate like. Oh, I see what you did here when I played it at E3. It was just like I get it. I I played the first two of this, and I right. don't mean any. Saints but you know what? Games. I love Crackdown. Yeah, and they kind of screwed up Crackdown Two, if I may say. So I think Crackdown Two was fine because it was the exact same thing as Crackdown One. Well, yeah, but like you kind of want more, and hey, here's a whole new city for you to jump around in. That's and true. it also has like more comedy in it and a riffraff radio station. So if you're into weird, dumb stuff, they got it for you. So the only it, thing that yeah. is slightly different with this from Crackdown in terms of like jumping around for orbs is you get like the amount of height you get when you, when you first unlock the super jump is like w- higher than anything you'd see in Crackdown. Okay. So it's kind of accelerated, and I think I kind of miss the slower pacing to. Like, now I'm a level 5 with my agility and stuff like that. Oh, okay. But, you know, that's a really just weird complaint. It's not even a complaint. It's just an observation. Can you run really fast, too, already? You can run really fast. I just hold down the left bumper, and my character starts running. I can knock cars out of the way because nothing can stop me. I can then jump in the air and then press left bumper, and I'll glide, and I'll give myself air boosts. You can unlock multiple air boosts, so you keep going. Um, and I'm about to unlock running up walls. So there's some. So it's kind of prototypey as well mm-hmm. with the glide function. And fast running, dude. He kind yeah. of did that too. Yeah. But I guess because you're not driving cars anymore, it sounds like can you just play all the music just on your headphones, like a, like your character's headphones, essentially, or something? Yes. Or you just... don't need headphones. You just play the music. Well, yeah, but I like. I mean, it's just oh, in the world. Like, it's just, just yeah, correct. Yes. Okay. Um, and that's kind of so. Just like the concept of like, where did this music come from? Well, who cares? You just want to listen to music, right? Yes, I do. Well, I that's, think also it's in a weird Matrix thing, right? So can't right. You just... You're, I guess you're in a computer, so that could be a justification for it. But I guess from like a gameplay standpoint, they've done a number of things that's like, you know what? We just kind of wanted this to be more fun, so we understand that this wouldn't work. Like for example, even in the real world, this happens. Like, um, or actually, I guess there is. No real world part now that I think about it. But okay. coming off of Grand Theft Auto, um, mm-hmm. w- like in that game, you need to, when you're driving, you need to avoid cars because you'll lose momentum if you crash, right? Yeah. Just like yeah. in real life, if you crash, you're not going to be going forward anymore. Mm-hmm. In Saints Row 4, when you hit another car, they just kind of bounce off you. <laughs> okay. And you just keep going. And it's like, you know, this is great because I am I'm trying to get from point A to point B and you're helping me Saints Row, so thank you. So you just don't like the fact that GTA tries to be too much of a simulation basically? I'm not saying I don't like that. I'm just saying it's refreshing that in Saints Row it's just like we're just going to make this like really easy to Well, navigate. one's striving for realism and one is striving for absurdity, so Right. And I'm not yeah. saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying I guess I'm having more fun with the absurdity because it's allowing more fun. Hmm. I, I don't, I don't okay, know. that's 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 a, that's subjective. Yeah. It is, but I'm a huge Crackdown fan, so I'm a little biased. Okay, I'm playing it right now and I'm collecting orbs. I have 92 right now and I'm gonna spend them on stuff. 
how many are there? Like, did they go for full blown? Like, I have no. I don't think I've seen like a number. Unless maybe there's some in the achievements. Uh, I know there's an achievement for getting a hundred of them, but okay. I don't. I'm not sure. There's nothing like out of this many you've gotten and stuff like that. Did, did they do the thing Crackdown Two did, where you have to chase them? N- not for the these orbs. Um, there is um, some mission stuff where you can kind of like. If you, hey, if you collect this gold orb that's kind of rolling around, it'll just stop the height, like the police from chasing you. Um, okay. So I guess, kind of, but not really. Hmm. It's it's pretty funny. Um, so I'm playing as a lady. Okay. And there's seven voices in the game. Uh, the first three are you know male one two three. Second three are uh, female one two three. Mm-hmm. The seventh voice is titled Nolan North. Yeah. <laughs> and so I picked that on my lady, because, uh, duh. I haven't heard, like, it's definitely Nolan North, and I haven't heard anything amazing yet, but I have been told that in some scenes, the character will just start referring to themselves as Nolan. <laughs> okay. Which I think is really funny if that is true. Um, so I'm waiting. I'm waiting to hear from that. I, but, I, as far as I know, one of the three default male ones is Troy Baker too. So you get your two superstars of male. It's so all your favorite voice, voice actors yeah. in the game. Yeah. Right. What has Nolan North done lately, though? Uh, he hasn't. Uh, he's been in a lot of minor things. Like he's the Penguin in Arkham Origins again this year. So he hasn't done any like starring roles. Yeah. Uh, since Spec Ops. No, I, no. I guess he did Deadpool. That was this year. Okay. Oh, okay. There you go. I'd forgotten about that. Well, Desmond isn't I, in Assassin's Creed anymore, is he? I don't believe he's in 4. I believe it's all pirate stuff. Yeah. I don't know. So he's definitely we'll kind him. of taken a bit of a backseat lately to uh, Mr. Baker. But, oh well. He's still he's still getting work, I'm sure. So Right. Yeah. Huh. There's still some great music cues. However, I don't think the ones I've come across so far have been as good as the... Uh, as Saints Row 3rd. I don't know if that's just because I'm kind of expecting it now in Saints Row 4. Yeah. Uh, where okay. Saints Row 3rd it can't, came out of nowhere. I'm finding that with a, some of the humor. Anytime they kind of do a joke that was in the third one, it's definitely not as great as when it first came out of the third one. Because in the third one, it was like, man, this this is crazy. In the fourth one, I'm kind of expecting it. Okay. Um, so they, but they, I'm they really try to go it. bigger and crazier, but it's kind of hard to top some of the stuff they've already done. It's it's similar thematically with um, Uncharted two to three. Uh, where, yeah. Yes, okay. so Uncharted three, you know, is still great. You're doing some really cool stuff, but the jump from one to two was so much bigger mm-hmm. that that surprise just you know it left a larger mark. Um, I'm having a ton of fun with it. As soon as I saw these orbs, I kind of stopped doing missions, and I've just been collecting orbs. Okay. Um, it there's tons of like mass like you get a ship with your crew in there and you can talk to them straight up Mass Effect style. Okay. And from the get-go, you can go up to them and hit Y to talk to them, or X to romance them. <laughs> okay. Some will say, uh, I don't think we should do that. Others will be like, my main character was like, hey, Kenzie, want to fuck? And then she punched me, and then we had sex. Okay. And then I asked to romance her again, and she was like, we only do it when I want it. And I went and tried it with someone else, and they, they wouldn't have sex with me. Weird. Okay. Like, I guess, I'm sure, video game meta commentary, maybe. That, yeah, that's, like, cut I'm through. having a lot of fun with this game. Yeah, okay. I'm having a lot of fun. How much time have you spent so far? I've only put about three to four hours in. Okay. Um, But that was kind of, like, all today, so it's going to be a lot more this week. Hmm. Uh, but let's talk about a new release. Okay. Let's talk about a game that I reviewed, The Wolf Among Us. Ooh. Episode 1? Episode 1, titled Faith. So this is the new adventure game from Telltale, mm-hmm. following up on The Walking Dead. Okay. Um, so I reviewed it if people want to check it out. Comic Book Bin. Uh, that game is really good. Okay. I had how, a lot of fun with that game. How does it diff- Like, what? I guess, what is the gameplay like? So the gameplay is the same as The Walking Dead. More kind of quick time event stuff, because there's a bit more action going on, because you're actually, you know, you're chasing guys, you're getting in fist fights. Okay. Whereas a lot of the stuff with uh, The Walking Dead was kind of, don't let this zombie bite you. Um, yeah, fair enough. 
So there's it's, it's yeah. So a lot of the action is a little more fast paced, fast paced, I should say. Mm-hmm. Um, but the biggest difference is I would say just kind of like the general like the main like motifs and themes in The Walking Dead was kind of you're taking over this character who might as well have amnesia because the scenario he's in is completely new to everyone. Right. In The Wolf Among Us, you're taking over a character who is already in, like, an established world. He has a job and everything. Uh, you play as Sheriff Bigby Wolf, who is the real-world incarnation of the Big Bad Wolf. Okay. From such tales as Red Riding Hood or The Three Little Pigs. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's kind of cool just to kind of get things slowly introduced to you. Like, you'll come to your apartment, and there'll be a pig there, and it's one of the three little pigs, and he's your buddy. Or, for a lot of the game, you're hanging out with Snow White. And it's just kind of cool to see these specific characters pop up that you know, but, you you know, you obviously don't know them right away, and then it's just, oh, that's that person? Great. Or, oh, that's that's the Beast from Beauty and the Beast? Really cool. <clears throat> okay. Um... I wouldn't even say you need to be like a huge fairy tale fan to appreciate it, because um, it's pretty dark. Uh, I guess that's a little bit of a difference again with The Walking Dead, and in, in that you know you're for the most part you're killing zombies, and then you know there's obviously some human versus human stuff. Mm-hmm. But this one, because you know you're playing as fables, that's what they that's what they all call themselves. They can take like more damage, so you'll be fighting like the woodsmen for like knock jumping him and tackling him out windows and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Like, and I haven't or, read the know. comic this is based on, so... This is, is that... a prequel to the comic, so you, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, I've read the first couple issues of the comic. I just I want to get into it more. I just haven't had time to sit down with all, like, 150 issues or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you don't need to know anything about the comic going in. Um, <clears throat> for anyone who is interested, it is $5 for the, for the first episode... 25 for the full season, just like before, and I think it's on sale for a little bit less right now if you want the full season. Oh, they're actually selling individual episodes? Because Steam just seemed to be kind of saying, hey, 25 bucks, yo. So... Uh, I'm pretty sure you're, yeah, uh, in the press release I got, they were like, and hey, you know, it's only 5 bucks if you want to try it out. Okay, okay. So you should be able to get it, uh, you know, piecemeal like before. And that would make, like, it would be weird to sell an episodic thing, but no, you have to commit to all five right now. Mm-hmm. Well, some some games do do that, like Kentucky Route Zero. Well, actually, no, they just kind of incentivize by making the price per episode equal way more than what it would be if you bundle it. So, right, okay. Yeah. Which, you know, makes sense, but again, kind of ask, asking for a bit of faith from the audience. But I guess Telltale's reputation is well established at this point, so... Right, mm. and so I think this game also looks a little different. Um, like just visually speaking, just visually speaking, like the art style is pretty much the same. However, they've kind of enhanced it. The characters look more like comic book drawings and whatnot. Things look flatter. Uh, the contrast is also seems to be way up. There's tons of dark sh- shadows and stuff. It's basically like a noir crime story you're going through. Lots of like purples and stuff going around. I mm-hmm. think it is set in the '80s, but um. Yeah, just kind of like Bigby is a cool character to inhabit. Um, he's got like a dark past and stuff, and so you you know a little bits of that are touched upon. Uh, I had a I had a lot of fun with it, and and I think you know if you if you enjoy The Walking Dead, there'll definitely be something here. I think you didn't you don't have to have necessary if you didn't like the gameplay in Walking Dead, you probably won't like this. Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe if it was just the story or something throwing you off, I would still maybe give this a try. I guess, uh, is the element of choice in there, or is it... There's not as many, like, big harrowing choices, um, okay. keep, which I think is fine, because it is the first episode so far. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there will be some more real hard ones, but there is definitely stuff where it's like, man, two people you are suspected of this murder are running away. Which one are you going to go after? Okay. And there's even stuff where it's like, should I... You know, should I check on this person before this person? And you can miss scenes. So there is definitely splits in how your story is going to turn out compared to someone else's. Okay. And, like, um, was there the whole, hey, this many players did this thing kind of breakdown? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. And there was even one, like, at the end, it was like, hey, you didn't you didn't save this guy, uh, this many player, Or it was like, at the end of your walkthrough, this guy did not survive. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, you can change stuff like that as well. Um, 
yeah, I guess I guess that's about it. Uh, again, I uh, I quite recommend that game. I'm looking forward to the next next episode, and I guess I'm looking forward to season two of The Walking Dead when that whenever that comes out. Yeah. Question. Uh, yep. Sorry. Question about uh, fables. Do question you, in the back. Yep. Yeah. Do you actually need to know anything about the books at all? No, not at all. It's like I said, it's a prequel. Um, they introduce you to everyone as you're going through, and actually, kind of the more hunting you do in in the small like walk around sections, the more like character bios and stuff you'll unlock. So there's a ton of like backstory and stuff that you can go play play around with in the menus if you wanted to know more about these specific characters. But no, you don't need to know anything about the books. Um, and now that I do own it, you guys uh, are sharing my games. You should play it. <laughs> okay. So. Well, we gotta play. Well, I guess you're done it now because you reviewed it. So. Right. But you could always, you know, like played it when I was sleeping or whatever. Yeah, I queued it up. That's I true. haven't actually downloaded it yet, but uh, I'll I'll get to that at some point. I, like same kind of runtime, like two three hours. It, it, two hours. Yep. yep. Okay. Okay. It's like a a movie or something. Basically. Yeah. Special special features. Uh, do you know when the next ones do? I have. I I don't think they've announced it. I was even looking on the Wikipedia page, and it still says to be announced. So. Do you remember back to Wang Was it like what two months? Kind of two and a half. They were aiming for one month originally, and I think for the most part they hit it. I want to say one or two may have come out a little bit later than the one month mark. Like it would kind of stagger it weird, where it's like, well, this one came out on March seventh or something, and the next one came out on April twenty eighth or whatever. Like it's like a month and change. Yeah. Yeah, for some of that. I, I and I don't know remember. now that they're kind of you know essentially a two game studio at the moment. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know how that's gonna handle it, but I who knows? Yeah, um, I'm kind of curious like which how much staff worked on both, or if it's like oh no, there's like this other team like this is the Jurassic Park people, but they did it right. well. This I would time assume with everything they got out of that first game mm-hmm. that they put a ton into these next two. Yeah. Um, so th- I'm I'm assuming they're prepared. Well, right. like, they've learned a lot of lessons, and they're applying them. Like, it sounds like some of the same stuff is in there. So, like, well, I mean, it specifically the breakdown of other players' choices to kind of make it a community thing, you know? Like that's right. Kind of a I'm kind of curious idea. how much Sean Vanneman and Jake Rodkin touched either of these. Well, yeah, because now they've gone and formed their own studios. Because they've so. gone, so I wonder, like, how much at all were they as a part of this? Right. But Did you notice Nick Brecken in the credits, though? Because he's also there now. I didn't really watch the credits. Okay. Fair enough. So I'll pay attention. Sorry. Yeah, you can pay attention. There you go. Okay. Um, but apart from that, uh, I've downloaded Pokemon because I'm sure people are legitimately curious about that. Where I'm at, I've mm-hmm. downloaded it. I have not played it yet. Okay. I bought X. Everyone bought X. Sounds it seems like, like it. Yeah. Yeah. There's always it, it, it one that everyone better. bought. Everyone bought black. You know. Everyone bought diamond. So. Yeah. Everyone bought yeah. silver. Apparently. I, I was in uh, Walmart a couple days ago, grocery shopping. Went into the electronics department. They had shel- like like shelves of the games were empty because everyone had bought them. All they had were two copies of Y. <laughs> okay. So but apparently, Y is the bastard child. Of I guess. Generation. I guess the question people have also been like, why would you go to a store? It's the 21st century. Just download that shit. What right. are you doing? Well, some people love it. John is one of them. Okay. Well, owning physical stuff's cool. I, I guess it's just like, did they incentivize it with some sort of exclusives or something to kind of lure people out? But I, I, I know, know at GameStop you got a poster. Oh, right. We talked yeah. about those posters. Okay. But, you know, yeah. So that's a thing. Readily available. Oh, uh, that's all I've been playing. Okay. Nice. Okay. I have quite a list this week, but that's... I don't know. That... Most of the time was actually spent on one or two of these games, so I can kind of go through a couple of them kind of quickly. But, All right, uh, tell me everything about Scurvy Scallywags. Okay, so you play as a pirate, and you oh play shit, Scallywags. what? Yeah, it's Ron Gilbert returning to piracy. Amazing. Oh. oh man. Yeah, it's pretty great. Um, I got a new piece of the shanty today, so I think I'm at ten out of sixteen. So okay, yeah, I don't want to hear any more about Scurvy Scallywags. Okay, okay. can we okay. have like a week off? Okay. It's, it's this year's Tiny Tower, so I don't know. It's not a problem like Tiny Tower was, though, I don't think. It's a game. Well, you know what? You didn't think Tiny Tower was a problem for a while. That's true, but I don't know. I still first feel good about stage it. is denial. I, okay, maybe I'm in the first, spa- first stage, and I'm addicted to Scurvy Scalawags in an unhealthy way, but I think you can beat it. So maybe if I beat it, but I guess you can beat 
Tiny Tower 2, but I have Second stage is bargaining. Okay. Let's just move on. <laughs> um, <laughs> you got me. Are you Horn. angry? Because that's like the it. third stage. Uh-oh. No, I'm You're not... just going to no. force him all tonight? Don't speed it up, man. No, 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 because then I'll delete it. I don't want to. So I'm still on <laughs> the first stage. Um, Beyond Two Souls. I think the fourth I... stage is sadness, isn't it? Despair? I think it's termed despair. So and then it's despair acceptance. is one of them, yeah. Acceptance yeah. is the final. I guess brief Scurvy Scalloway story then I guess. I missed my train stop train like my stop on the train by like three stops. Okay, dude. So, that's a that's a sign. Yeah, I like looked up and I was like, Oh man, I am wit like what like yeah, what am like, I doing as with really my life? Another station. So yep. It it did kind of negatively impact my day. <laughs> so Maybe I, I I don't play it on the train anymore. So there's that. Well, unless <laughs> I'm not allowed to play it on the first, train anymore, guys. That's the first phase of the journey, and I know there's a lot of time, but I'm cautious about it. Whatever. Beyond Two Souls. I uh, finished that game. All right. Um, I got a small kind of... question. I'm trying not to be spoilery. So did yeah, you get okay. a third. Soul? There's a decision near the end. It's not the final decision, but it's a. You have two options, left or right. I chose right. Okay, I don't know why I asked that, because I forget which one that is. Okay. Um, we'll talk after. Okay. Yeah, there's no way to say what that means without spoiling that part yeah, of the game, so, so never mind. Um, and then for the other one, I pressed square. So there, okay. if you remember that. No, whatever. Uh, um, I don't remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, how did you feel about the scrambled timeline in that game? Cause that I actually being... liked it. Okay, there... Because I I saw I saw your tweet saying you it was disjointed and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one moment where I uh, didn't where I felt the same. Um, like it's specifically like she's mad at a character and then in the next scene she really likes that character. Yeah. Uh, but I'm stuck being mad at that character and then I'm just kind of confused. Right. Like, wait. Like, do we hate this character switches. or do we not? Yeah. Um. But no. For the most part, I liked it because, like the kind of that whole thing where I said there's never really a lull because there was just so much like, oh, this is completely different. So what's going on here? I can just keep playing this. Right. But like, it also seemed to kind of create hard breaks for me. Like I I did not play it the way you did. Like I thought like, as I was playing, I was like, how did Sean play this in two sessions? Like this is, this is crazy to me. Cause like, I, I couldn't do that. Like I played it like over four or five, maybe six. I just kept stopping cause it kind of stops. Like there's hard stops. Where it's like, I guess I, just, I guess I was just always interested in what this new scenario might be. Okay. I guess it's just like whenever there was like a clear time jump where it was like, okay, this is like way later, so I'm okay. Like I, I can turn it off for a while or something. Like I just kind of was able to put it down pretty easily. And I, I, I don't know if that's like bad necessarily, but I, I was kind of getting tired of some aspects of it. I will say, like I think I said it last week though, like. Because of the combat, like, I was not good at the combat initially. Like, that kind of made it very, very clear that there's, like, no consequences to screwing up at all. Right. Like, so there was some sequences where it was just like, I'm doing so bad, and, like, this is just brutal. Like, Jody Holmes is getting beaten to crap, and this is not how it should be. And you're like, I'm sorry, Ellen Page. I'm a huge fan. There's that, but then also, like, the story just kind of makes up ways for that to keep going, because it right. doesn't want there to be a game over screen, which just seemed kind of a weird way to handle that problem. Because, like, when I was playing, like, uh, Walking Dead, we were, we were talking about it, like, there were game over screens in that game, and sometimes they would just kind of feel cheap, because you didn't do much. Like, it's just like, oh, okay, I guess I'll just load and play that action scene and press A a little bit sooner. You know, like, that's one way to handle it, so them kind of just continuing to write alternative ways for this to go so it keeps going forward is novel, I guess, but at the same time, it just kind of... You you could literally just turn on that game and press start and then just sit there, and the game would continue to do things. So it'd be like a movie. It would be like a movie. No, that's not true. You have to walk around, but no, I get what you're saying. Oh, yeah. I guess guess there are sequences where it's literally just... Well, actually, I don't know. Like, I'm wondering if it would just kind of stall until there's a cutscene again. And it's just like, oh, and then Jody got thrown over here, and then it continued the way it would. I'm sure there's actually, you're right, there's probably points where you literally have to press up or something. But there were definitely sequences that seemed to be just kind of waiting for a clock to go down. And then you get to continue seeing what happens. 
So I don't know. I overall, I guess, like I I did not like how it, the the timeline scrambling happened. Like they did kind of justify it at some point, like just in the narrative or whatever. But it, I felt yeah, it would like introduce a character and then not really get too deep into what's going on with that dude, and then cut to later, and you just kind of no longer care. I I I don't know. I was having issues. Or, or actually no. Like, that they have the training montage right up front, and then there's nothing resembling that for, like, a long time in the game was kind of weird to me. Because it's like, why was this tutorial here if we're not going to do any of these mechanics until, like, chapter 12 or whatever? Like, I don't know. That was kind of a weird issue for me, too. But So, like, overall, how do you like the game? Um... I kind of got caught up in how ridiculous it was willing to be sometimes. Like, some of the stuff you do in the latter part of that game was just so nutty that I was kind of like, wow, alright. Like, I didn't expect something like this to be in this game, so you got me on that front. Like, this is kind of a weird, ridiculous movie. But, yeah, I don't know. Like, um, I'm trying to think. Like, visually, like, I will say the graphics at times, like, kind of were amazing. Like, there were some sequences, I, I, I can't say exactly where, I guess, but, uh, no, I think I you lo- you, you're you playing Ellen Page. That thing you looks are. exactly like, like the, Ellen Page. The, yeah, the character models are amazing, too, but, like, even just some of the environmental stuff, like, some of the action sequences, the way they look, look really cool, but, like, the gameplay, again, is very kind of, you're basically running down a corridor, but that corridor looks really good, so they kind of put, they invested in certain areas that are still striking, but it, it's kind of weird how kind of thin the gameplay is. But there there were some okay plot reveals and stuff later in the game, but I don't know. It was definitely a very kind of compromised experience in a lot of ways. Like, it's like, I like Ellen Page a lot. I've played other games by this team. This one was like kind of the least momentum for me personally. Like It wasn't pulling me in the way those other ones did. Um, Better or worse think, than uh, Heavy Rain? Well, it doesn't do like the just totally disastrous plot twist that Heavy Rain does. Um, so I guess, in a way, I kind of felt this was less, you know, disappointing. Like, it didn't pull me in and then lose me. It just kind of was coasting in the middle ground for quite a while. So I, I guess the highs weren't as high as Heavy Rain, but it also didn't crash. The lows weren't as low? Yeah, and it ended up, like, ending on a fairly good note, so it kind of did better. Oh, okay, then I think I know which answer you picked. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Oh, maybe. Like, maybe some of the endings are bad. I I don't know. I haven't gone back and kind of investigated, but, uh, yeah, there's definitely some very clear, like, this is a branch, do you want to see this cutscene, this cutscene, or this one kind of thing, so... I haven't gone to see what what other stuff is there. I missed a lot of bonus stuff. Like, I kinda yeah, I missed realize, a bunch too. I didn't realize there was bonus stuff until like kind of late. Like I just found. Like, oh, I got I got it in the first scene. Oh, okay. Like, is it always as as Aiden kind of like your? I uh, the only around. I only found like two, and they were both Aiden. Yeah, uh, so, so you I would assume kind of so. Be like when you whenever you get an opportunity to just kind of float around and investigate stuff. There's kind of secrets stuff. Yeah, you can kind of, like, if you go off the trail or something, you might be able to find something. Right. So, like, I'm actually kind of curious in the the behind-the-scenes stuff about that game, but I can't watch it unless I play more of it, and that seems kind of weird because it's, like, diving back into a mini, like, a mini-series or something. Like, that's not something I'm kind of primed up to do right now. And I don't know, did did David Cage kind of change his mentality? Like, with Heavy Rain, it was like, you're only supposed to play it once. And now in this game, it's like, no, there's, like, bonus collectibles. Go back and Get, well, I don't know. That. Keep in mind that uh, there was tons of endings in Heavy Rain, but still only play that one once. So I don't know. Well, yeah, like he really didn't want you to see them though, because then it would yeah. reveal that the smoke and mirrors were kind of there, right? So maybe he or... just wants you to have a perfect first playthrough. I have no idea. Yeah, I guess it, like for me that was kind of thing where like a lot of this kind of avenue of game development is smoke and mirrors, like kind of convincing the player there's more at stake maybe than there is. Like, it's like, right. oh, man, you better hurry. You better you better help her out. And you're just like, oh, okay. But, like, Heavy Rain did that pretty successfully. Like, uh, Telltale started to figure that out pretty well. Um, this game, like, maybe it's just because I screwed up so bad, like, with kind of the directional gesture-based 
stuff. Like, you're just supposed to kind of be like, oh, that fist is coming at me. I'm supposed to duck away. Like, I just kept screwing up. I don't know what it was. Like, I Well, couldn't... when you were picking your options, did you say you don't play games very often? Maybe you should No, I said I was pretty good at it. So. Oh, well, if yeah. you're going to lie to the game, you know, it, it's I... trying to help you. <laughs> but I've literally played, like, two out of the three games this season. You've literally involved, played so... two games before. Okay. Two well, games, yeah. I, I don't know what a lot, a lot of games is to them. No, I'm saying Indigo Prophecy and Heavy Rain, so I, understand. I thought I was... Well, like, that was the one behind-the-scenes thing I saw. It was them kind of explaining why they did that, because they're just like, we didn't want to distract from the action on screen. Like, we didn't want Simon playing there. Like, I get why they would change it from Indigo Prophecy, because that was a very distracting experience, because you'd be kind of basically playing something completely separate from what was happening on screen. So they've gotten better and better and kind of meshing that with what's happening visually or whatever, but I don't know. The balance still seems a bit weird. Like, they might have gone too far and kind of pulling back in some cases. Like, those action scenes, I just I just screwed up several times. Um, but yeah. So I don't know. It is definitely a Quantic Dream game. Like, that, that team continues to kind of impress in some ways and kind of just make me shake my head. Like, I guess I can say this vaguely enough. I thought the chapter The Dinner was ridiculous and like oh, stupid. Yeah? yeah, I was just like, wow, this is so dumb. Those are my favorite chapters where kind of nothing is going on. Okay. I like those ones. Like the more character centric. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I got it, but it also seemed like just the weirdest tone shift from what just happened. Like, so that's, I guess, where the changes in timeline kind of made me feel it was like, man, this is really weird in terms of dramatic pacing. Because, like, something high stakes and insane happens. And it's just like, hey, let's kick back and have a dinner party. It's just like, what? Like, I, I, I you kind of had me going momentum-wise, and then you kind of just decided to jump over here. And now I'm kind of, again, derailed. Like, I don't, I'm not as invested as I almost was. <laughs> like, it's, it's kind of weird. Like, I guess there was a sustained portion of the game that I actually started getting caught up in because it was, like, long enough to kind of be its own little mini experience, and that was on the ranch. Okay, yeah. Like, I don't want to get into, like, all yep. of what happens, but it was, like, a long thing. Like, I was almost like, oh, is like was that all kind of character setting up, and this is, like, the story? But then I was like, no, it was just kind of, like, a longer short story. Like, it almost felt like a collection of short stories starring the same character. Right. Which, like, some of them ended up calling back to other things, and then it started to form kind of a larger plot at some point. But some of them felt so distanced from the other stuff. That so would you have preferred it if they had just maybe rearranged a bit, but still kept it mixed up? Well, I don't know. Like, I, I almost want to, like, think through, like, what would a linear version of this game be? Because it might be kind of still pretty interesting, you know? But Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, like, I'm assuming they kind of wanted to tease you with kind of mystery and stuff. Like, just like, what's this character all about? Like, what's going on? Uh, I, I get that, but occasionally it seemed like that was maybe not the best call. But again, that's kind of a subjective thing. I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I'll probably still play whatever those guys put out next or whatever. Like I watched the Dark Sorcerer trailer, which is this, just them kind of joking around. But they're still kind of really obsessed with capturing acting and putting more kind of cinema stuff in their games. Which, you know, their grab bag of references are kind of weird. Like there were parts of this game that remind me of Carrie, but then other ones that remind me of Ghost with Patrick Swayze, which two different things, but yeah. Overall, I don't think I'd generally recommend this to, like, most people. Like, you kind of have to already know what they do. And right. this story on its own is just kind of a weird thing, so yeah. Like, if you're a huge Ellen Page fan, or you really liked Heavy Rain and want to see what those guys are doing, like, that's, that's who this is for. I'm not sure how it's going to do, like, commercially. John, do you have any interest in this game? Yeah, it's sitting on my desk. Oh, you already bought it. But you have a lot of games sitting on your desk. That doesn't mean you play them. Well, okay, okay. it's on a different desk. Did you finish Heavy Rain? Oh, I do, don't you have, do you have like a Yeah, no, I finished Heavy Rain. Desk. Okay. I almost beat Heavy Rain twice. I actually really enjoyed Heavy Rain. Okay. You'll probably like, really like this then. That's there, good. There's... I just need to free up that stupid space. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm actually probably going to buy a hard drive sometime this week. Just solve it's only like two gigs. Plus. Problem. Yeah, no, but I think I'm I only have like a hundred megabytes free. 
yeah, mine is almost full right now. Like, I, I deleted a 200 meg thing to clear up the 182 meg space I need. Like, it is right at the edge there, so... Yeah. So you um, just you yeah. can't wait for that PS4? No, I, I probably can, but... Whatever. What What's that default hard drive, did they say? 500 gigs. I think they're both 500, yeah. Okay. Good of them. Um, but yeah, that that was kind of the majority of my early week was finishing that off. Like it seemed to go for a while. Like those must have been long play sessions, Sean. Like, um, got pulled in, huh? Yeah, I, yeah, I guess so. I don't know. It was okay. on a weekend, so who cared? Yeah, fair enough. Um, I played Sound Dodger for a little bit. That was a thing I didn't know was a thing, but I was excited as soon as I saw the trailer for it. It's a Adult Swim game that kind of got fleshed out for uh, Steam. I guess it's Sound Dodger Plus technically. Um, that is a music game where the song generates kind of just obstacles for you to avoid. So it's kind of like a bullet hell thing, but only, you're only dodging shots. Um, audio and you're surf? kind of, uh, like audio surf in terms of it generates levels based on your music, which is kind of a key thing I, I like. Um, audio surf two is also out, but I haven't played that yet. Oh, is it um, fully out? I think so. At least it was available for buying something. That was the beta, but I, oh, Maybe that's just the beta, but I, I like that first one a lot, so I may still... Here, you can do, like, stunts and tricks and stuff in that now. Yeah, you're actually, like, surfing, yeah. kind of. It sounds awesome. Cool. Um, this was this is neat, in a way, too, though. Like, uh, you're kind of on a spinning record interface, is what it looks like, and you're okay. just a little circle, and you just kind of avoid stuff. But it kind of does, like, you can slow down time by clicking, but... When you do that, you're not earning points. So, like, a perfect run is kind of what you're aiming for. And the one mode I kept coming back to in Audio Surf was just ninja mode, where you're just dodging stuff. So this is just kind of a more elaborate that with kind of a simplified 2D thing. Um, the one thing I just keep running into with these games that use your own music library, though, none of them use MP4. So most of my music library can't work. Isn't so, your library mostly MP3s? No, because it's iTunes stuff. Because I buy stuff on there. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, like, there, like, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna play all these Justice songs, and it's just like, no, you can't. I was like, oh, what about demos? No, you can't. What about the new Daft Punk? No, you can't. Oh, okay. Um. Oh, right. I torrented that Feed Me album, so I can play that. Oh, like it was just kind of. I want MP3s, I guess. Now, why? Well, I, I want someone to make that work. Just be easy. Be easier, but maybe MP4 is a bitch of a thing to program for. I don't know, but yeah, I was kind of bummed out by that. But at least it supports it, so I just have the wrong music library apparently, so I can fix that on my end. Um, then I played the first little bit of Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon. Hey, way to go! That game's good. Yep. What, uh, what led you to suddenly play that? Uh, the Idle Thumbs. It. Idle Thumbs, probably, but also it's the year of Luigi, man, and it's October. <laughs> yeah, come on, it's, it's almost over. I guess I it's true. There's only two months left. So I got had to. Check I think that I saw a tweet this morning of someone saying we are we're, we just entered the last quarter of the year of Luigi. <laughs> the last quarter of Luigi. I guess maybe the most honest answer to that question is, oh, I have a job now, so paychecks and stuff. Paychecks. Fair enough. Did you yeah. buy a retail or a d- digital copy? I bought it retail. Oh, you were just complaining about that earlier in this podcast. <laughs> I know, but. Yeah, I'm hypocrite. Yeah. Uh, no, at least you. Why? Why would you do it? that? Was there some sweet like giveaway? No, I mean, I guess I'm just. I didn't. It's You're not my 3ds. To it it could use. technically have gone on sale physically, although I doubt that with a Nintendo game. But. Yeah, it's Nintendo. Well, I'm using Britney's 3ds, so also it would then be her copyright. So it would. Yeah, I don't know. I so just didn't think to do that. So you're gonna get a 2ds? A 2ds? No, I I did turn on the 3d for a little bit. Um. It's fine, I guess, but it, it didn't seem to be really changing the whole thing, so I, I turned it off. Um, but, yeah, that's a feature. Um, I don't know. It's Luigi's Mansion. They added a flashbulb thing pretty early, so I guess that's their like change to turn on your flashlight. It's just pop the flash, and then you can catch ghosts. But, yeah, that seems like a Luigi's Mansion game. Uh, the Pixeltron, that was kind of cool. They're kind of joking around with video gamey stuff a little bit. Um, I don't know what that is. It's how Professor Egad like teleports you places. Yeah, like a little a, teleporter. A TV. Is that, will, is that like, the DS that you have? TV. No, that's your uh, dual horror. Your DS, dual screen horror. Okay. 
The pixelator is what gets you I haven't that's played what... that since the first quarter of the year, Luigi. So the camera that puts you in and out of stages—that's the pixelator. Yeah, oh, okay. he says dual scream, but dual yeah. scream. Yeah, sorry, that's the name. That's the name of the DS in the game. Yeah, you got your pun wrong. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he'll use like TV cameras and televisions to tell. It's not a pun. It's play on words, which is kind of weird. Um, I would argue I that a play I'll on play words is a pun. I I barely got to crack into that, but uh, at I guess. I started it two days ago, and last night I had a really bad headache, and I was just like, I don't want to play that right now. That would just not help. So I didn't play it. Um, then I played Grand Theft Auto V a little bit. Um, and that helped? No, that was before... That was two days ago. So I probably yeah. should have ordered this differently. I'm just um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. That was before the headache, but whatever. Um, I was basically finishing up some single-player stuff I didn't know was in there. Like, uh, yeah. a guy at work told me there's these cult missions that you can get into with Michael. So I went to the website in the in-game phone and did some of that. Um, and got to a point where now it's doing the classic Grand Theft Auto thing, where it's like, here's a list of cars, go find them and bring them here. That sounds and fun. It isn't. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, ha- it has never been. <laughs> like, it's... I guess I expected it at this point, but I also kind of thought in this one, there's like an in-game mission that's part of the main plot where you're stealing cars. So I was like, oh, this is how they implemented the Grand Theft Auto of the Grand, Th- you know, of the whole thing. But it kind of just a scripted way where it just points you towards the super sweet car you want and then you steal it. Um, but no, there's just a, which region of the city has these cars spawning periodically? You got to go hang out there and then find one and then drive it here. Yeah, I, I don't know. I will use a fact for that when I do that, just to see the rest of that story content, I guess. And then I did a bunch of parachuting missions with Franklin, and that guy I thought I blew up, he actually did show up again, so I didn't oh, okay. that. You just had to complete a bunch of tedious like side activities. So, yeah. Some some were tedious, some were actually kind of cool. Like, you drive a motorcycle off a skyscraper and then do a bunch That's of cool. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so I had a bit of fun with that. Played a little bit of Grand Theft Auto V online, um, enough to kind of see the prompt that they're doing a stimulus package where they're basically apologizing to the community of Grand Theft Auto online fans and giving them thousands of dollars. It's, uh, 500,000. Yeah, half a million. And the weird thing is it's in two increments. So you get it, you get 250 and then you get another 250. Right. Which sounds like it might kind of break the economy because apartments are only 80K. Um, a house might be a, a bit more than that, but I don't know. That seems kind of strange. Unless they're planning to patch in more content. Although I also heard anecdotally they've kind of subtly tweaked some of the amount of money you can get from certain activities. So there was a survival mode where you could apparently clean up, and now you can't. So they kind of are trying to lower the amount of money you can earn natively, so you have to get your microtransaction on, seems to be the theory. So that's kind of lame. Um... I don't know about Grand Theft Auto Online. I think I'll still pop in periodically, but the the lust for exploring that city is definitely kind of waning. Sir, you so you think you're done with Grand Theft Auto? I really hope they just do like big DLC again, because Lost and Damned and Ballad of Gay Tony were both solid bits of business. So. Well, how long did it take for those to come out, though? At least a year? Quite a while. Yeah, it was like 10 months and then another year after that or something. It, it was a good amount of time. So... Actually, it might have been even more than that. It might have been a year and a bit before the first one. Because it came out in like, April 08, right? I have no idea. That sounds right. That's a like, date. I want to I say it was almost October 2010 or something. Or 2009, rather, when the first bit came out. And then maybe six months later was Ballad of Gay Tony. I don't remember. GTA 4 was uh, April 2008. Yeah. So when was the DLC stuff? Was it October that year? Or was it even later. Which was first? Uh, Lost in the Dam? Lost, Lost in the Dam, Dam yeah. yeah. February 2009? Oh, okay, February. So I And October 2009, on. or the end of October for Gay Tony. Oh, October was Gay Tony, okay. Um, yeah, th- those are really good, so I kind of hope they do character stuff, again, single player stuff, that's kind of why I play those. Um, and then I just, before this podcast, played this, this game that was kind of a bit of a news story, I guess. It is uh, the New Zealand Transport Authority made a Flash game that's supposed to kind of teach the dangers of driving recklessly. Is um, this the cell phone thing? N- well, it's a it's a f- internet browser Flash game. So I No, I mean, like, it's the one where you need to text to drive? Is it no. that game? Oh, okay. No, um, it is just a Flash racing game, ostensibly, but 
the the kind of big hook of it is, and like this is kind of the the thing they tell you in every news article about the game. So I don't feel like I'm spoiling this thing because it's it is really short. But I guess you can play it if you want to. It's available on their website. Um, yeah, the game is Flash. You only get one shot is kind of the tagline, and as the title suggests, you only get one chance at playing the game. Which that was kind of the idea that kind of hooked my attention because. Hideo Kojima's kind of been casually saying that as, like, a cool idea he had that he can never do, where he'd make a game where if you die, you have to buy another copy. What? Um, yeah, this was, that like, like, I a, don't want that. I know, but it kind of raises the stakes for your playthrough, right? Because you're kind I guess, of like, but... oh, shit, I can't play this ever again. So I was like, oh, okay, like, someone's finally made that game. But they've only sort of made that game because it's, like, a 90-second game. And by the looks of it, you can't actually not fail, essentially. Like, it, it's, a, so it's you, an you ad. So you need to fail. You need to fail, and, like, the only controls are left and right, essentially. So you're driving a car, but, like, I'm like, where's the brake button? There is no brake button. Because, like, the game is just constantly trying to push you forward and forward and faster and faster and faster. So then you crash. Like, it is all about just making you crash. Well, that seems and, to be, like, you know, that would make sense. You, the difficulty goes up. Well, no, like, there's no way, like, the, the game is kind of giving you feedback that suggests you could fail, but you can't. Like, okay. it's like, oh man, you're going to miss the next checkpoint, only three seconds, but it's like, no, I'm like holding the down button trying to slow down and avoiding the speed up arrows, and I'm still going to make it. Like, it's just timed to basically play out in exactly one way, which I found kind of lame. Um, But I guess the big thing people are talking about is... It's, it connects to your Facebook when you go to play it, and then it pulls from your photo library and shows you your life flashing before you eye, for, before your eyes as you crash. So okay. So it's, it's supposed to kind of be like, oh man, you you, sh- you only get one life, bro. You think what it's worth. Is the life like just like a made-up s- series of events that they're it's just saying ran- happened? Or? Well, I think it's just a bunch of like most recent photos. So for me, it was a bunch of connect party shit. <laughs> which like totally undermined the this is your life of it. Oh, yeah great. Like, oh well, yeah that's me with like a dragon head that's me getting hit by like a bolt of lightning while britney's wearing like a shogun helmet like it was just like nonsense um i think then it focuses on your profile picture so that might it like depending on what you have it set as that could be impactful or not um, but it, kind of a neat idea on that front. I did find that kind of an effective bit of like social media integration or whatever. Sure. And the message is solid. Like, don't drive like an idiot. That's fair. But I kind of felt it was a little cheap in that you literally can't not drive like an idiot in the game. So it's not really fully fleshed out or whatever. But yeah, I was maybe a little, I expected a little more based on what I read. But whatever. That is it for games I played this week. Let's go on to the news. All right. What's happened in the world of video games? All right, Sean big one this week. Yours. Yeah, was uh, Watch Dogs got delayed till next year. Yeah, Just, it did. wow. That was they've been talking about Watch Dogs and it coming out around this time for what the past year, year and a half. Uh, well, Watch Dogs and Star Wars thirteen thirteen were the first two next gen games. Yeah. So there's definitely been, like, some hype around this for a while. And they've definitely been marketing pretty aggressively. Like, I remember when Grand Theft Auto V came out, there was, like... I- I'm assuming official ads, like, based on what I was pitched on Facebook and stuff, that were like, hey, you know, explore Los Santos for a bit, but see you in Boston. Or Chicago, rather. See you in Chicago come November. And I was just like, okay. Like, they're pitching this as, like, the next big open world thing. Yes, Master. Yeah. And now it's just not happening this year, so... And not for quite a while, right? Like June, maybe? Well, they just have it as spring 2014, so it can go, I think, April. up till June, I guess, or something, yeah. Yeah, somewhere between April and June, which is quite a big delay. Like, that was kind of one of the big next-gen kickoffs, too, right? So I'm, Yeah, I'm kind of really curious, like, it, like if it, we were... It we, it should have been done by now. Like, what has happened where they're like, no, we're, like, not near being finished? Well, I can't. I I have to imagine that team has been crunching like crazy trying to reach that date, and maybe it just became apparent. Like it's just like, no, nah, dude, come on. Well, I mean, keep in mind, a they're doing five different versions of the game, right? Because it's PC, 360, PS3, PS4, and Xbox One. I think it's also on Wii U. Oh shit, you're right. That's six. Yeah, 
I'm assuming they can farm that out to, like, the porting and stuff. And also Ubisoft, like, you know... Is the biggest thing ever. Well, they yeah, also true. just, like, involve all of their studios to kind of co-produce stuff. So I'm sure all hands are on deck were for Watch Dogs or whatever. But the thing that, like, as soon as it the, it was announced, it was just like, that actually makes so much sense considering Assassin's Creed 4 is also coming out. Like, why would they ever have scheduled two giant things that close Well, together? a lot of people are wondering, are they only delaying it just to get out of that? So people well, yeah, think they're like, delaying because of Grand Theft Auto Five and how well it's been selling. I, I I guess I can see some comparisons there, like it's open world shooter modern day stuff. But I don't know that that also kind of looks like backing down if that's the case, right? Like just like oh shit, that game was crazy. We need to buckle up. Like I I don't think so. Like well maybe, but the thing that just seems like they were going to cannibalize their own sales, right? Like they would. Like, you know, between those two games, those look like kind of similar experiences from my point of view. It's like, do you want to be a pirate or do you want to be a modern-day hacker? Like, you know, that's different enough, but it's still going to be an Ubisoft open-world thing. Why put those right next to each other? So, that I'm assuming that's part of their logic, too. I don't know. Like, we're, like which one were you guys more excited for? Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs. Okay. So maybe we'll see a little spike in Assassin's Creed 4 pre-orders now that it's like, nah, you can't have that. Well, I gotta, well, I gotta get something, is that what you're saying? So. Maybe, like, maybe that's what's happening. I don't know. What do you think? I have no idea. I, I, They say it's for polishing time, and really, with how ambitious that game sounds like it's trying to be, I can understand why. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do find it funny. Uh, there's also rumors today that another game might be getting delayed. That's supposed to be at launch for PS4, and that's I believe is it Drive not Drive Club. What's the? Is that the PS4 racing game Drive Club? Yeah, it's Drive. That Club. is the yeah okay. the PlayStation Plus. Yeah. So there's current rumors that that's going to be delayed as well. Okay. But that's I think not as important because Watchdog was in a bunch of bundles that were going to be sold as well. Right. So a bunch of retailers were kind of acknowledging that and saying, "Don't worry, you'll still get your system day one." Like we'll we'll send that to you, and you, like I'm assuming maybe there's a voucher or something for Watch Dogs, or they'll just kind of put it towards a pre-order of the game or something. I don't know, but uh, yeah. Well, and then there's also the thing is uh, there was Watch Dog bundles. Yeah, we just uh, oh we sorry just said that sorry <laughs> I'm still playing Saints Row, so I'm missing. Oh, okay, things. right distractions. Right, but you already got your open world fix, right? So whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's got games. Saints Row 4. He doesn't need to do anything else. Mm-hmm. Maybe. I don't know. But, yeah, like, I, I was not super hyped about this, but that's still kind of weird. Like, it was definitely a high-profile release this holiday, so... Yeah. Strange to see it. Like, when it, I heard it was delayed, I was like, oh, like, what, December 5th or something? It's like, no, dude, next year. It's like, oh, okay. Here... Guess, here yeah, this is, like, this is a, like a six- to eight-month r- delay, like, I would assume... Like, like, is there just like some horrible thing wrong with it? Like, wasn't it just February? I thought the delay was still February. Well, it's just it's spring. So, oh, oh, never mind. You're right. So that was at least April. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sorry. What what were you? I was gonna say. Now, my question is, how is this going to affect pre-orders on the new systems? Because I know a lot of people I talked to were more excited about Watch Dogs than kind of any other game coming out at launch. That's true, yeah. There does Who seem knows? to be a bit of a waning in interest. Like, it's just like, oh, wait, what games are coming out for it? Oh, like, kind of nothing. Oh, Yeah, okay. like, the only PS4 game I'm looking forward to that's at launch is Knack and Dead Rising 3 for Xbox One. Yeah, which is, that you know, at least a exclusive first party. Well, not first party Capcom, but still. like. An well, yeah, they're both benefits. exclusive. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I guess Titanfall, I'm also looking forward to that, but that's also Xbox 360. Is that day one, though? I thought I would be surprised, but I, I don't, I don't remember. look that up. I honestly didn't look into it, but or like Infamous isn't until February next year or whatever. Like, the, yeah, it's kind of strange to see. No, you're right. Uh, first quarter 2014. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, there's stuff coming, but the first wave of stuff. I mean, launches are never super spectacular, but yeah, this one's starting to kind of look a little, little lean. All right, I'm trying to I'm trying to do this one mission. Okay. It's like a wave-based mission where a bunch right. I have to like survive three waves of gang members that come in to attack me. All the gang members are wearing hot dog costumes. Perfect. Well, it's kind of like that weird Mr. Whatever's death chamber. What was that thing called? 
like the the side activity in the third. You know that wacky game show kind of thing. Oh, the cat thing. Yeah, it was like an obstacle course where you run through, but the dudes were kind of wearing weird costumes. Right. Yeah. Oh no, there's two gangs here, and the other ones they all have big heads. Okay. And I don't know what's going on, if this is, like, an issue with the game, but, like, half of the characters are just kind of upside down running around. Weird. weird. Well, I mean, in the third Matrix movie, there were those dudes that ran on the ceiling. So like, this literally right. looks like something's breaking, but the game is playing fine, so I don't know if this is on purpose, and it's just trying to be, like, this is weird. Drawn. This is just insane. Okay. Saints Row 4, live update. Yep. Um, it's insane. Uh, the crew was also delayed. Oh, this is totally broken. They're driving in on cars that aren't even, like, fully in the screen. Okay. Open world jank. People's Project necks are too board. long. Yeah, this guy's driving in, but the driver is upside down. Man, I don't, how is this game functioning? <laughs> Amazingly. Uh, the crew was also delayed. I just want to also mention Right, that. that's another Ubisoft one. Yeah, which I guess some people were kind of keen on. I never got to see it. Like, I... I never got a glimpse of what that really is, but is that a Tom Clancy joint? Was that kind of a tactical? The crew, thing? I thought, was the racing game. No, I'm pretty sure the crew was like you got a squad of cool the, dudes. No, the the Tom Clancy one was the division. Oh, the division. What is the crew? Is that a racing game? I'm pretty sure the crew is uh, the racing game. All right, I'm sorry for doubting. There's you. too many racing games. There's so many the then thing, so I kind of forgot. I apologize. Yeah, uh, the first picture that comes up for the crew is a car. Okay. All right. Revolutionary I, action driving game developed exclusively for next gen consoles. I love action driving games. They're Apparently, awesome. I wasn't paying attention to that game at all. So whatever. Um, hey, a bunch of PSN titles are getting cool PS4 updates. Yeah. So Flow, Flower, Sound Shapes, and Escape Plan are going to be on PS4. The interesting part, though, is if you own those games, you own the PS4 version. That's really, really cool of them. And also a genius way to kind of hook people into, well, I want to see, you know, I already got games for it. So exactly. It's like, well, which one should I buy? This is already going to be too expensive. I won't have any games. Wait, I'll just play these games again. Yeah, you'll get the crispest version of Flower that exists. So enjoy that. And Sound Shape's pretty cool. And I, I own all of these. Oh, wait, I guess I own the Journey disc. So that is how I have Flow, because I missed the free Flow. Week. I don't know That's if that would week. count, because it's not on the network. I don't know. Yeah, so probably not. So I have two of these, then. What's Escape Plan? I don't know. Okay. Uh, is that the, isn't that the launch shell for Vita? Or that was a launch shell for Vita? I would believe it, but I don't I don't know for sure. Apologies to all the Sony fans out there. Who are yeah, that's actually what it is. A puzzle don't... video game released for the Vita. Okay. A, as a launch title. Look at that. Hmm. Produced uh, by one of the guys who worked on Fat Princess. Okay. Um, I heard Flower looks very nice on the PlayStation 4, but of course that was by Nick Setner, whose job is to sell PlayStation 4, so take that as you will. This was on Twitter. Um, and finally, I guess for news, I watched the little bit of Kingdom Hearts 3 gameplay they revealed. Um, that sure looks like a Kingdom Hearts game. Does it got Mickey it Mouse my... in it? There was no Mickey Mouse in the Does it got Keyblades? It, it does have Keyblades. Key it for blades. Sure has key blades. Yeah, it has a giant uh, Titan dude from Hercules. There are Disney rides in it. Oh, great! Which yeah, he, I guess he yeah, to be fair, like Disney Infinity also had Disney rides in it. So, which one? Disney uh, Disney Infinity. Well, yeah, but this is a like RPG that has a history already. Like I don't know, this is a new thing for their series anyway. It looked like rides were some manner of summon. Like you could just be like. What is it called? Thunder <laughs> the Railroad? the Caribbean thing or something? That's that's funny. The, the Black Pearl just shows up, crashes into an enemy. No, like there the was, whole like the theme dude, park ride. <laughs> there was a giant ship, and it was swinging around. So, yeah, that ship was like hitting Heartless. So, yeah, I don't know. It looked very Kingdom Hearts. Watching it on my phone was probably not the best way to get a, like an appreciation for how next gen it looks because I was just like. This just looks like a Kingdom Hearts game, but I guess that's all I can expect, right? And at least this proves they're actually working on something. So, yeah. They were riding a train, and that was that was something. So there you go. News. That was the news that happened this week. All right. Emails? Let's move on to the emails slash Facebook questions and Twitter as well. Um, yeah, top-down perspective at Gmail, Facebook. Uh, there's a group there. 
and on Twitter it's TDP Podcast or at TDP Podcast, I should say. Um, Sean, do you want to read us that first one, or are you too busy jumping around? Uh, no, I can read it. Uh, these ones are from Facebook. First one comes in from Christopher. Why are podcasts called podcasts? Well, no one wanna... This is very meta. Yeah, who wants to jump in on this? I believe the idea is that uh, it's a group of people, so it's a, a small group of people, and it's a pod. Pod, right. And the cast is because it's a broadcast. Uh, from what I gather, it's actually just because that iPod is hella popular. So, so many people were listening to stuff like this on that, that they just put it into the word. Yeah, actually, he's right. Or, yeah. mi- or it's, it's a combination of broadcast and pod from the success of the iPod. I think, right. I, you know, we're going to take it a different route. Cast, casting a spell, mm. we're making magic right now. Like, pods, like, seeds, like, our ideas going out right. into the world. and Well, and just, like, like this show, like, it's so good. This is magic. Holy <laughs> smokes. Okay. That's another... I thought you were going to go, like, oh, you cast, like, a fishing rod line, and then you hook a pod, and that pod like is a pod of, of conversations. A pod of, what, like oh, a pod okay. of whales or something? Yeah, you <laughs> hook an entire pod of whales, <laughs> and you bring it back, and then it tells you about the games that came out this week. Well, this if you're listening like, if to you a video game podcast. Just press a button on your iPhone or something. It's just like, hey, catch me a pod. And then it just grabs something. It's like, hey, wh- what did I get? <laughs> you see what a picture of peas today? show up and it pops one out. Yeah, it's just like, here you go. And it's, you know, 90 minutes of dudes talking about video games. Cool. I don't know. There you go. I believe the term was first coined in 2004. I actually looked it up earlier. I was like... I, I opened up Wiki to confirm that. Yeah, it was like an article in The Guardian or something was the first printed thing that's used the word. But I, I suspect that dude saw it in a forum somewhere. I'm just going to, you know, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, next question's from uh, Tessa. Hey, John, you get the Wii Mini yet? For real, though. Oh, wait, that's the next part of the question. Yeah. Hey, do uh, you get that Wii Mini yet? No. You going to? Or Canadian Pro- Wii? Probably not. Considering my Wii, my Wii works fine, and uh, there's the Wii U. It's and there price, isn't really... it's dropping in price. Is it is seriously? It? It's like eighty bucks. For, I was gonna yeah. say it was already a hundred. No, well, it came out at a hundred. Okay, so it's it's down to eighty, and I've seen it like at eighty with Pikmin two and stuff. So. Pikmin two. Well, yeah. Oh yeah, the new play control thing. Yes. Okay. No, a GameCube um, copy. I, I saw of a bundle with Pikmin Mario Kart 2. Wii, so. Just like we had a warehouse full of GameCube games, it doesn't even play them, does it? No. Does the Wii Mini not? Okay. Because so no. it doesn't have the uh, it doesn't have the controller ports. Right. Right. Um. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to have the hook of like the GBA Micro or whatever, where it's like, no, it's actually a different kind of thing. It's just not a weird shaped Wii that doesn't do some stuff your Wii does. Well, so. that's no, that is the G- Game Boy Micro because it was just a, a different shaped thing that you could barely read text on. Well, but, like, I don't know. People were talking about the brightness or something. And it's, you know. A I want a micro, system. man. It's being smaller. Those things are weird. They're cool. I know. I want one. But oh. people want too much for them. They do. Because I guess it's kind of rare. So. Yeah. I mean, they only play GBA games, though. That's the thing. That's okay. I have, like, 100 Game Boys. <laughs> Good point. Um, and then the second part is just, hey, Sean, we should have a Pokemon battle. So. Yeah, sure. Once I start playing it. Yeah. Yeah, so you're kind of you haven't trained up any stuff. Do you I haven't get into started. the competitive side of that a bunch. No, or? like never. Okay, I'm into the collecting side of the Pokemon. Okay, but you treat it largely as a single player game, for the most part. Yeah. Okay. Um. Next question is from Annie. Hey guys, I gotta ask, what's the best game to play when you're sick with a head head cold? I swear I'm not asking this because I've got one. I'm That's good because we may have caught it. Um, through yeah. the internet. Through the internet. By reading this email. I would um, assume it's got to be something kind of relaxing, right? Yeah, no, what you you should play is Geometry Wars. Just, yeah, just something like, with the most flashing lights and severe quick and reaction. And tons of music you going at you. Like, Completely yeah. overdo your like system. And then right after that, just we Fit. Yeah, <laughs> straight to that. Yeah, just jump up. While you're running. still dazed from all the flashing lights, go start doing we Fit. Uh, Pac-Man hey, Championship up. Edition DX. That's not that stressful. I'm just flashing lights and music. I'm oh, feeling. okay. Okay. 
Um, we talked about it earlier in this podcast. Flower might be kind of relaxing. Flower's good. Just kind of drift uh, around. I'm just trying to think of like kind of short games, like you know, you'd curl up in bed with, like Little Inferno. Yeah, like, that immediately came to mind. That might actually get you into character a little bit. Like you're just like, oh, because so those cold. kids are slowly sick and dying. Yeah, like it's kind of a sad, heavy story in a weird way. So right. If you're if you're curled up too, you might kind of get more into it. So that's a good right. suggestion, actually. As you learn about kids burning themselves. <laughs> um. Yeah, I, I don't know what's like a good, easygoing kind of experience. Maybe some Nintendo stuff. I'm gonna maybe. yeah. I'm I'm gonna check my Steam library. Oh crap! It's okay. It's turned off. Um. I don't know. Pokemon's a pretty like low key game. Yeah. Um. I I mean I did have that headache and I was not equipped to play anything. So I guess it kind of depends on how sick you feel. Like maybe you should just have some soup or something and lie down. But that's not fun. So I find I've watched movies. FTL, because you know you're gonna lose anyway. <laughs> and you can pause all the time. So it's like this is too much right now. You can just pause it and go get some tea or something. Right. Neo Citron. But yeah, nah, I feel better. Hopefully this has been resolved. I don't know when we got this. But... The Room. Nah, maybe too much thinking. I don't know. So a casual RPG would probably be a good thing. Okay. A casual RPG. Some Something where you don't have to really, like, react too much. You can just kind of slowly relax at your own pace. Mm-hmm. I think Little Inferno is a really good... Uh, L- Little Inferno element is also a really good choice. Yeah. So, like, maybe some puzzly stuff, too. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, I mean, it depends on the puzzle. Like, you probably wouldn't want to play Tetris because that starts off slow but then gets hectic. What about some P-Cross? Yeah, no. What about some Professor Layton? Professor Layton. Professor Layton, yeah, it's got that story. Phoenix Wright, maybe something you can just cuddle up Just read? Yeah, maybe, like, and then, you know, one step further, read a book. And one step back, Top Down Perspective's favorite game, Ghost Trick. (laughs) There you go. There you go. Bring it back. Bring it back, Nathan. Good job. (laughs) Available now. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I really liked that transition there. That, that was smooth, man. Good job. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> I haven't played in a while, but anyway. Um, One day I will go back to that. Yeah, that's my. Too bad there's that's, ma- that's the well, that's the best Christmas game. I'm actually no, I'm kind of glad there's only one of those. It's kind yeah. of a unique thing. That it's is. a special I was say, thing. Too bad there's not more, but you know, game's right, I guess. Well, that what's that other one coming out? That's like polygonal. Oh, I don't know. Is it what? by those dudes? Or? There's a, no, it's not by those dudes, but there's another company. It's next gen. They're making a game where it's like, like I think Ghost Detective is even in the subtitle. Oh, or shit. Uh, oh, that murdered soul suspect? Yeah. yeah, that's the one. Okay, yeah, that's the Square Enix thing. Um, I haven't seen that firsthand, but there was like a big banner and stuff. At yeah, three, I don't know. But, yeah. But, yeah, no, there Ghost Trick is the best Christmas game. So, so there you go. Play, play some Ghost Trick, Fam Detective. Um, n- last question here. Uh, someone else. I can do it. Little Foo. Okay. Writes in. What are some of your favorite co-op games? Uh, I've been on a Genesis and SNES kick lately with a friend, and we need some suggestions. Mm, John, this is kind of your, your. If we're if we're only allowed to talk about those two, yeah. Yeah. What's some old school co-op business? Co-op like together or versus Sonic. I think, I think when it comes to the Genesis, Sonic's the only co-op game I ever played. That, it is co-op. I mean, there's like Streets of Rage, Final Fight. Does uh, Rocket Ninja Knight Turtles. have two players? Oh, okay, so yeah, Ninja Turtles. Ro- Rocket Knight is single player. Oh, single player, okay. Uh, I can ju- I'm can. i just going to look at my wall. Like, if you're going to do some competitive, then, like, I don't know, Mario Kart, but there's a bunch of those now. Like, if you're going to do competitive, there's always Bomberman, Tetris Attack... Uh, Uniracers. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess, hey, Battle Maniacs, that's two-player, right? Yeah, Battletoads and Double Dragon as well. Yeah, uh, John's favorite game, Turtles in Time. There you go. Two people can play that. Yoshi's um, Island is single-player, but Yoshi's Cookies multiplayer. Okay. Hey, Wario's Woods has a head-to-head mode. Zombies <laughs> Ate My Neighbors. It's co-op or I have co-op. a who's really into that. It's a really good game. It's difficult, but it's good. Okay, what if we broaden it now and now from anything? For maybe people out there Wait, that are playing is games there, that... Is there some manner of two-player thing in Secret of Mana? Three-player in Secret of Mana. Okay. Do you need three players, or 
No, you can play it all by yourself and just set the AI to do well, stuff. But... but could a second person jump in and it won't walk it out? Or oh, no, yeah, no, you can have two players. Okay, okay. Yeah, you you just if you have a multiplayer, you can have three. Does that only happen like a ways into the game? Uh, it takes like twenty minutes to thirty minutes to get the second character. Oh, okay, okay. So and then it early takes on. like another twenty on top of that to get the third. But then like for the rest of the game, which is like at least ten hours, or depending on how well you play the game, I guess. Okay. Uh, so there's some SNES and Genesis connect, uh, you know, recommendations. I guess you want to open it up to co-op in general. Yeah, for everyone else out there. Okay. Um, have have you guys jumped into the Portal Two stuff? Oh, it's only like the smallest bit. Yeah, me too. I I barely touched it, but people said pretty cool things about it. But um, I guess it could also be really frustrating because it's puzzle heavy, so you could be getting angry at each other. Kind of like Ibn like Ob, which is kind of a weird co-op thing, because it's that's, kind of intense. That's a very hard co-op game. Yeah. Um, what what are some go-tos, I guess, for you guys over the last few years, co-op stuff? Well, Gears. Burnout Paradise. Burnout Paradise. Um, uh, Gears of War. Yeah, yeah. The, Gear, the Gears games are... Like Horde Mode? Man, like Gears 2, I played so much Horde Mode. Man, I kind of want to play Horde Mode. I mean, the Halo series, all of them kind of have co- pretty in-depth co-op stuff. Yeah, so. yeah, good co-op multiplayer online for the story. And couch multiplayer, like, just versus two, I guess, if you got four people in a room. I just unlocked, I can run up walls now. <laughs> nice, good job. Actually, the Saints Row it. games do have co-op, don't they? I, they do, you're right, I haven't tried they, it, but they, they do. They do? Yeah, there's a bunch of missions that are also like, you can't do this without someone else, so. Oh yeah, no, I guess Saints Row 3 had that as well, technically. Yeah, I just never, I never did it. I think it, maybe if they had any of it in 2, I might have dabbled, but I don't remember if they did or not. Huh. Anyway. Oh no, I think that's just where they introduced, like, a terrible multiplayer mode in general. Oh, the versus mode that you the had to, like, modes. play on a specific day to get one badge or something like that? Stuff like that, yeah, I, I barely, barely did that, but I definitely remember vaguely playing that game. Because I, I think you would collect, like, gold chains... It was like go around and like you'd kill a dude and then he'd like a bunch of bling would come out of him. And then you'd pick that up. Great. That was not a great co op experience. But you know what was? Blood on the Sand. Yep. Thomas Classic. Woo kid. So dumb. <laughs> no, it's not bad though. No, that like, game was all that game was actually pretty fun. It is it's I've like played funny. through it, I know. Yeah. I, I don't know. We're talking about co op games. They're kinda dumb sometimes, but hey, if you like Resident Evil Five that is the best way to play it. So there's that. Beyond right? Two Souls. There you go. <laughs> Don't do that. That would be oh, co-op those... game of the year. They did bring up a good point on the Bombcast that I thought was interesting. Because, like, you're not supposed to be in control of Aiden, like, having a second person literally control that that character is in sync with the story. So it I guess might be a way thematically, to sure. Yeah. It would be weird, though. But... Like, because you'd basically just be sitting there doing nothing for long stretches. But if two people are, in theory, invested in that story, that could be a cool experience. I don't know. I did not try it. Did you try the touch stuff, by the way? No, I didn't. I remember he said he was thinking about it, but he didn't want to set up his phone. Okay, like, I have the app, but then when it got to the stage of, like, wait, I'm using this instead, I I just stopped. I feel like he at least needs to see what it does, but like you said, it was just swiping mainly. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, everything be... in the game is basically just kind of pointing at stuff, so like it point towards the thing. So yeah, that could work, but I, don't know. I didn't try it. I uh, I don't know. Is that all we got for co-op stuff? Borderlands. People love the. Borderlands. I like Borderlands. That's true. Yeah, that's good. Let's 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 call it there. Okay. There's many many more. Uh, the best you know here. I'll give you this advice. If you're looking for co-op games, a great site to go to is called Cooptimus. Okay. I don't even know what this is, so... This is a site that literally focuses only on co-op games and has a master listing of co-op games that you can check. And you can, like, divide by platform and stuff? Yes. Okay. Cool. That would be really yeah, helpful. It is because... co-optimist.com. Okay. Um, and yeah, Facebook, Twitter, email. Games of the week. Email? Yeah. No, we're done emails. We are games of the week. Did I, I, I had to say it anyways. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's to end the segment. Um, what was the standout game from all your streaming this week, John? Uh, Straw, you say? <laughs> yes, every game. Uh, the one that I guess they got the biggest attention was probably when I played Resident Evil Five. Okay, 
because I fought uh, one of the bosses in the game by only throwing eggs at him. <laughs> Did that work out or no? Uh, <laughs> there's a video on my channel if you want to see what happened. Okay. Ooh, all right. it, it works. It, it's doable. That's what I'll say. Okay. Weird. Okay. So Resident Evil 5. Sean, what was the Mine is The Wolf Among Us. Okay, available now, the first episode. And I'm going to say, because this is just a little anecdote that mm-hmm. I remembered. Um, when I went to play it, every time I would hit play on Steam, uh, the game would crash immediately. It would not load up. And okay. I was like, oh man, what is wrong with this computer? It's like Saints Row 4 all over again. I know. So I went online trying to figure out, like, what's an issue, and people were like, try to unplug in the Xbox controller. Oh, weird. Just like the thing with Walking Dead had that last year. Okay. On PC, if you had a 360 controller plugged in, it just wouldn't run. That fixed it. Can you, once it's on, can you plug it in and use I it? I don't know. I didn't want to try it. There is, I'm going to say no, it would probably crash it, but uh, a bunch of people on the Steam forums are saying, if you download this little thing and put it in the folder, it should work. But I was like, it's working on keyboard. I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to play it. I'm not going to mess around with anything. However, okay. I'm on Windows 8 and that works. There was a bunch of people that were like, I'm on Windows 7 and that did not fix it for me. So, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, Wolf Among Us is my game of the week. Okay. Um, hmm. I guess just because th- the concept resonated with me really hard, I'm going to say Sound Dodger Plus. All right. Just because, like, I didn't get to go too deep into Luigi's Mansion. I've already played a bunch of GTA V and stuff. Like, yeah. Um, Beyond Two Souls is never getting it from you. No. It was just too many kind of asterisks next to this is okay. Like you know, there was too many. Yeah, things no, I felt the, I down. felt the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Sound Dodger though, like, is a thing. Like, if I can get my music library, all of it working in there, like, I I can see myself playing that a lot. It's it's a really cool, simple premise, and uh, I like music games. So cool. Yep. Um. So there you go. Thanks for joining us. Uh, late October, well, mid October. It's the middle of the yep. month. Um, Not Halloween there- yet. There's some games. Yeah, playing time to think of a costume or whatever. Um, time to dive into Pokemon. Right. So I guess we'll have plenty of Pokemon updates next week. Yep. Uh, catch you later. Goodbye. Zika's catching stuff. That's, I don't know. Catch them all, please.